I've had people in big pickup trucks pull up decks to me in the winter and roll down their windows and tell me, you know, just, uh, you know, how awesome I was to be riding my bike in the winter. And I'm thinking I'm not cold. I'm happy. I'm not stuck in traffic. I'm getting exercise. It's not, it's, there's not really too much that's hard about it. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week, I step out of my comfort zone to learn about a cheap, easy way to get around that uses less energy, winter cycling. Cycling is a very healthy, low emissions transportation option, and it can actually help reduce traffic as we learned in our story on Vancouver last year. But Vancouver is not exactly the coldest climate in Canada. This week, we learn what it takes to cycle on the streets of a real winter city in Edmonton, Alberta. To learn the basics, we went to the workshop of an Edmonton bike mechanic who's a four-season rider himself. Hi, I'm Keith Holgren with RBF Cycles. Hey Keith, while we're here to learn about winter cycling, I'm a noob to this and you, I, in fact it might take some convincing to get me on a winter bike. But I understand you're going to tell us what the uh, essential features are of a, of a bike that you want to use in the winter time. Let's hear it. Sure. Uh, the weapon of choice for most people is a mountain bike. Yeah. Um, this isn't quite a mountain bike, but um, the most important things that uh, we talk about when we're teaching classes or talking about winter cycling is tires. These are commercially made studded tires with over 150 tungsten carbide studs per tire. They're absolutely necessary for winter riding. They're very sticky on ice. Um, the fenders that you put on your bike are really important. Um, you want very, you want full coverage fenders and if they have the extra little rain flap on the back yeah. that keeps the front tire from throwing all kinds of crud into your drivetrain and that will greatly prolong your drivetrain life and keep your bike running smoother in the right. winter and keep you cleaner so when you get to where you're going you're not covered in in brown goo yeah um, <laughs> brown sand brown sand we call it brown sugar so for winter cycling you want a bike with studded tires and fenders and don't forget lighting is also important. You want to be visible, especially on those short winter days. You should wear a toque under your helmet and to keep your face warm, you can use either a scarf or one of those nifty neoprene bank robber masks. So this works really well in really, really cold conditions. So. Nice. And it comes off when you walk into 7-Eleven so they don't think you're robbing them. <laughs> That's right. That, 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 so it's kind of really the important. bank robber look there. Or if you walk into the bank, you want to be able to take that yeah, yeah, off yeah. and not be trapped in your clothes. <laughs> you should layer up on your hands with either two sets of gloves or gloves inside mittens. And a good solid set of winter boots with wool socks is key. That layering advice applies everywhere else as well. So, what we have here is my excellent American military surplus base layer. Cost two dollars. <laughs> um, here, and then over that I've got a nice little merino zip up. And then my favorite all-around kind of winter jacket. Um, it's just a heavy, heavy cotton, so it's windproof reasonably waterproof and breathes really well. And after all this, I climbed aboard a purpose-built winter bike. Okay, so what do I need to know? What uh, do I need to be careful about? Get on and pedal and uh, <laughs> avoid, avoid slamming on the front brake in the wind. Ah, so not lots of front brake. Here we go. <laughs> and off we went. Whoa, it actually feels a lot more sure-footed than I would have assumed. And right from the start, it was pretty clear that my own preconceptions about winter cycling were off the mark. The studded tires were awesome on the snow, and it wasn't long before I was feeling plenty warm thanks to the healthy physical exertion and me overdressing. I think the, I'd have equipment issues though. You need the winter tires, no question. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pretty good. While that was a great learning experience for me, I also wanted to chat with an experienced winter cyclist who happens to be a city councillor. Hi, I'm Ben Henderson, councillor, Ward 8, City of Edmonton. Great. Now, I see you rode your bike to uh, work today here. Yeah, I do most days. Come, come winter, winter, summer, 
Hail, well, I, you know, I, I can't hail. say I've ever done hail. Not hail. But it's not because I, it's just because I haven't had the opportunity, I think, more than anything else. <laughs> For Henderson, his bike is actually the fastest way to get to work. He's also been part of Edmonton's Winter City campaign, encouraging people to get outside and enjoy our longest, coldest season. I'm noticing a huge difference in the conversation, the way people think about winter. There's a lot more people out, a lot more people engaging, a lot more fun ideas happening. Um, I, I think people are coming out of their cocoons and realizing it's a lot more fun to get out and enjoy it. Winter cycling is one of many activities that Edmonton is encouraging residents to get involved with during the winter. There are real benefits to getting more people cycling, reduced traffic, fewer environmental impacts, and better health comes to those who cycle. I mean, the major benefit, and there's some of the European cities that are way out ahead of us on this, you know, we know that the kind of congestion that a growing city is going to deal with is, is an unfixable problem if you're just, you can't, you can't widen roads enough to ever deal with the kind of demand. Um, so bicycles are one of the solutions, or I would say making it possible for people to make other choices besides sort of single vehicle occupancy cars is one of the choices that ultimately will keep our costs down in the city and make it a much more livable city. So, how about you? Have you tried winter cycling? Let us know in the comments about your experience. That's it for this week. Check out our blog, photos, and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to tell your friends. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. If you like this video, check out our episode on Echo Haven an amazing near net zero neighborhood that's a model of green suburban development. And if you're still here listening, subscribe to our videos. We produce a new green energy future story every two weeks.